I smell fear. And it smells good. What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about who is perhaps the most skilled tactician in the Separatist Navy, the notorious and seemingly invincible Admiral Trench. Trench is a member of the Harch species, an arachnid-like race of beings from the planet Secundus Ando. He's a remarkably tough Harch, having participated and presumably died in several naval engagements, only to keep reappearing to haunt the Republic. So we'll get into his complete history, how he survived the destruction of the Invincible, and even some behind the scenes facts. But first I want to tell you guys about the Star Wars Card Trader app by Topps. When the Clone Wars came back, they added a ton of new cards, but this weekend they dropped even more Clone Wars Season 7 cards. I have some of these really cool stylized ones, with Troopers, Jedi, and Separatists, but each episode of this season also has its own set, with really cool stills of important moments. With of course many featuring our favorite arachnoid admiral. You get free credits and cards multiple times a day, whether it be through missions, cargo drops, or lock-on, so you can quickly start to build up a neat collection. As you can see with my collection, there's all sorts of stuff from the Clone Wars TV show, The Mandalorian, and of course the movies. What's awesome about them being digital cards is that you can trade with others across the world. If you have duplicates of cards that you're just not that crazy about, you can swap them for something you've had an eye on. If you want to start collecting and trading with me, just go search Meta Nerds in the app. It's free to download, so check it out and start building your own collection by clicking on the link in the description. So be sure to check him out, let's get back to Admiral Trench. He makes his first notable appearance during the Clone Wars on the side of the CIS. But his history as a feared and revered naval leader begins with the Battle of Malastare Narrows, several years before the Clone Wars even began. During this time, before the creation of the Separatist Alliance by Count Dooku, Trench served the Corporate Alliance, which was allowed to have what amounted to its own private navy in order to protect their business interests, with Trench being a sort of private sector defense contractor. You'll notice that these trade groups would go on to make up the backbone of the Separatist military, so it was a natural transition for Admiral Trench. Over Malastare, he blockaded the planet on the behalf of the CA, leading a sector fleet to strangle the planet into submission, similar to what the Trade Federation would do over Naboo. The Republic arrived in the system with its own fleet, initially consisting of judicial forces. This pre-clone military peacekeeping force had some notable members like Will of Tarkin and Wolf Yularen, who would be Yularen who was sent over Malastare, and suffice it to say, the mission did not go well for the Republic fleet, as Trench systematically tore their ships apart one by one having mastered the art of these planetary blockades. Trench would ultimately be defeated, however, after a Jedi task force intervened and put an end to the corporate fleet scheme over Malastare. A corporate fleet was blockading Malastare, a fleet led by Trench. He tore our ships apart. Rebellion escaped with our lives, and a Jedi-led task force moved in to settle the matter. Trench's ship was destroyed, and we assumed he went down with it. The Harch was presumed dead when his cruiser was destroyed by the Jedi, but he would eventually resurface as an admiral in the Separatist Navy and wage war against the Galactic Republic, seeking vengeance on the Jedi Order that had once outsmarted him. If you are listening, Jedi, you've made a bold move and a grave mistake. When we next meet Trench, he is once again leading a blockade, but this time it's over the crystalline world of Christophsis. This world was crucial to the Republic, as it is one of the few Outer Rim worlds that did not secede to join the CIS. While Republic Senator Bail Organa and his task force of clone troopers were stranded on the planet's surface, a Republic fleet consisting of four Venator-class Star Destroyers and three supply ships attacked and tried to break the blockade, hoping to deliver some much-needed relief supplies to the Republic forces and civilian population. Trench's blockade outnumbered the Republic ships considerably consisting of several Lucre Hulk battleships, munificent frigates, and a jewel of the CIS Navy, a Providence-class dreadnought named the Invincible. This particular dreadnought, while similar in appearance to the Invisible Hand favored by General Grievous, is actually much, much larger. More than double the standard Providence, this supersized, two-kilometer-long version was a fitting flagship for Admiral Trench. One of the Invincible's key features, other than its vast array of turbolasers, were its absurdly powerful shields that were able to withstand the barrage from an entire Republic fleet. With this, he was able to challenge Anakin Skywalker's fleet, literally chasing the Republic off to go hide behind a nearby moon. Tell the transports to fall back to Obi-Wan's position. We'll cover their retreat as they escape behind the moon. The invincible shields would, however, be its undoing, as they took a while to recharge once lowered, perhaps creating a false sense of confidence on the Admiral's part. His tactical droid would inform him that in order to fire torpedoes at Anakin's prototype stealth ship, the Invincible would have to lower its shields. And these torpedoes were crucial for targeting the magnetic signature of this otherwise invisible ship. 
In this battle between Invisible and Invincible, Anakin was able to pull off an impressive maneuver, having the torpedoes follow his ship, but then racing towards the bridge of the Invincible, leading the torpedoes right into the bridge of Admiral Trench's hubris-infused vessel. The explosion seems to have set off a chain reaction, and again seemingly killed the Admiral. However, he did survive, but in explaining this I'm going to give away some details from the Tarkin novel, and later this video will get into some spoilers for Clone Wars Season 7. So just a heads up. Somehow, he was able to survive this devastating blow to his prized dreadnought, and though we cannot know for sure, the canon novel Tarkin seems to spell it out for us. What we saw over Christophsis was the destruction of the bridge and much of the upper level of the Invincible. But we don't see it explode, it's not blown into a billion pieces. In fact, there's such large sections of this ship left over that early rebels used them to fight the Empire. Birch Teller's warship, which to bring things full circle was hunted by the now Imperial Tarkin, was a ship made from cobbled together parts of CIS warships, including those from Admiral Trench's Invincible. When we see Trench re-emerge during the battle over Ringo Vinda, which is a massive orbital space station encircling an entire planet, we see that he is now a cyborg. Having several robotic arms, a new cybernetic eye, and even a large section of his skull, perhaps even his brain. So this time he was severely injured, even though last time he cheated death he survived without any visible damage. So it seems like he was blown backwards, down the bridge, or even into a lower deck, and could have escaped via the confusion via a myriad of shuttles, pods, or starfighters that all would have been packed into a supersized Providence class. There were a ton of other CIS ships in the blockade as well, and so the battle wouldn't have ended immediately, and thus there was tons of chaos for Trench to slip away in. This seems all but explicitly stated in those details from the Tarkin novel, but comment down below what you think makes the most sense to you. Over Ringo Vinda, Trench was in control of a significant portion of the station as Republic forces sought to drive him out. Increase our defenses. We must hold them here. Several Jedi had been committed to the task of defeating Trench, including Anakin and the sisters Tiplar and Tipli, along with scores of elite clone troopers. Trench's droid army had been pushed to its breaking point, but as he watched the battle from inside his command center, he witnessed something utterly unexpected. Trench watched as a clone trooper simply walked up and executed the Jedi General Tiplar. Lost our momentum! Fall back! This shock caused the Republic advance to falter, and the Jedi and clones were forced to retreat. Puzzled by the incident, Trench reported what he saw to Count Dooku, who demanded that Trench capture this clone. The Admiral succeeded with the use of V2 rocket troopers, and Tup was temporarily a prisoner of war, though a covert operations Eta class shuttle would help to bring him back. And this would be the last we see of Admiral Trench over Ringo Venda. The Harch's final engagement would take place over Anaxis, one of the Republic's key ship manufacturing worlds. Under a ruthless siege by the Admiral, the shipyard's production efforts were brought to a halt, and the Republic was forced to spend vast amounts of clones and resources to take them back, including one of the most elite and unorthodox units to ever leave Kamino, the Bad Batch. The Republic couldn't figure out how they kept losing the trench. Though he was considered a military genius, this was just a bit too much. They were losing on every front and would quickly lose the entire planet if nothing changed. Unbeknownst to the Jedi, Trench was able to hold on to a prisoner of war, a clone ARC trooper who was thought to be long dead. Cybernetically accessing the mind of Echo, Republic war strategies were revealed, allowing Trench to lead his droid armies using a special algorithm that could predict Republic strategies before they even made them. Merging Echo's mind with advanced AI to reveal patterns which Republic commanders weren't even aware they were falling into, and thus those predictions were given to Trench before his enemies even started mobilizing. But the Jedi became suspicious, and eventually discovered Trench's algorithm and organized a strike team to recapture this imprisoned trooper. And using Echo's inside knowledge of the Separatists, they could feed Trench false intelligence. The Admiral would fall for this trap, and ultimately meet his true end once and for all by the lightsaber of Anakin Skywalker the bright blue blade piercing through his chest. This soon-to-fall Jedi looking the cybernetic harch in his many eyes to confirm this specter that had haunted the Republic from even before the Clone Wars was now finally drained of life. And as if this wasn't enough, Anakin would allow Bad Batch to detonate the deceased Admiral's flagship, causing a massive explosion that destroyed what remained of Trench, his entire ship, and several other nearby Separatist ships, resulting in a Republic victory over Anaxis. So that's it for Admiral Trench, he really did die that time, but before you go here are some cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. His voice actor is D. Bradley Baker, who did the voices for the clone troopers in the TV series. Admiral Trench is of course based on spiders found here on Earth, having 8 limbs, 4 on each side, this large array of eyes, and the spider-like pincers or pedipulps in the face. We can't actually find this clip from the unfinished Season 7 episodes, the ones that came out a couple years ago, but the voice actor that was just standing in for Trench reading through the lines refers to him as Taranch, like Tarantula. 
If you want to pick up that Canon Tarkin book mentioned, it is linked down below. I really enjoyed the audiobook version myself, it was really cool to see the early group of rebels that are still not unified into a rebel alliance, and of course it got that cool remnant of CIS stuff floating around. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel for free, or check out our Patreon and PayPal. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, at least certain modules of this ship were invincible. And the Force will be with you, always.